was killing myself With the food I eat Toxic to my health Got the news There's another path That I could choose And now why? I'm your host and moderator, Coach Steve Toth, and uh, here with me is Peter Greenlaw, who is known as the world's most prominent investigative scientist. Welcome to the show, Peter. Thanks, Steve. All right, and our theme today is uh, what is the best way really to share uh, this, this new uh, conversation called the, the New Health Conversation, and also how do we share the to those um, concept that you have come up with. And uh, our guest today is Kirk Matz, and he is a certified e-myth consultant as well as a dream coach and an infinite, infinite possibilities coach. I, I love infinite possibilities. Yes. Welcome to the show. Thank Kirk. you. Nice it's to good, be here. To, good to have you. And what, what, I, what I love about, about the show that we are doing, because we are doing something completely new, I believe. And I'm going through the experience myself. I believe you have gone through the experience yourself, mm -hmm. and so have you. And I think it's time to share it with the public uh, effectively, yes. correct? And yes. I, I believe the show today is, is to highlight what you guys have come up with uh, in, your, uh, com in, in your conversations and in your work together in terms of how do we bring this to the public so that they understand it and they can actually implement it for themselves, mm -hmm. correct? correct? So share with us a little bit um, what your background is. Just give us a little more, more information about your background. Okay. And how did you guys met? How did you get together at first? And what are you building together right now? Okay. Well, I was fortunate enough to uh, get introduced to a gentleman named Michael um, Gerber. And Michael is uh, very well known for his work called the E-Myth, mm -hmm. Entrepreneurial Myth. Mm -hmm. So Yeah, I read the book. Did you? Yeah, mm -hmm. it's a great book. E Michael's an amazing uh, trainer and coach, a great mentor and a good friend. And I, I believe they're doing E-Myth now in different areas. Oh, they do it yeah. all over the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So one of the principles that Michael taught me in that was uh, systemization, to have a process so that the system really runs the business and the people can run the system. So when we were looking at, when I was looking at Peter's, you know, knowledge set that he's creating through his research, we looked at a way that we could put it into a format so that people could know what the sequence is, really understand what made it so powerful and why it was so important to know. And it's really fun because it's such a fascinating subject. It's it's brand new, cutting edge. Mm -hmm. What Peter's uncovered is is brand new, and mm -hmm. so it's it's fun. So that's how we really are writing it now so that it's in a process where people can understand the flow of the information, mm -hmm. understand the uh, cofactors that are involved in Tados mm -hmm. and how they work, and most of all, the connectivity and how that connectivity compounds all four of those cofactors mm -hmm. into something that's much more devastating than any one of them would be alone. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. So. So I used to be a, a big time consultant in my, in my days. Uh -huh. And one of the things in, in, in corporate America, what we used to do is, and what we used to notice in business consulting is that, you know, we have the founders and the founders have this tremendous amount of passion, just like Peter does. Mm -hmm. He has incredible amount of passion and he knows why he does what he does <laughs> and how he does what he does. Mm -hmm. And then as companies start building, mm -hmm. you know, and all of a sudden now you have a hundred people, a thousand people, 10,000 people, a hundred thousand people, now there's a culture, and then how do you transfer? So my, my, my real question to you is, how do you transfer that passion, not necessarily the knowledge, because knowledge is easier to transfer, sure. but the passion itself, mm -hmm. how do you transfer that to people that have never done this before? Well, I think there's two things. One is, is that as people understand the Tado syndrome and how this connectivity is, is really showing up and how it works, and then they start to really recognize it in, in, the, in their lives. And that's one of the things with working with Peter. I thought I knew mm -hmm. a lot of this information. I thought mm -hmm. I knew about toxicity and deficiency and what overweight was really doing and oxidated stress was really doing until I started w watching what Peter was doing. And then I started seeing the interconnectivity of all of those pieces. And once I saw the interconnectivity, it was became 
more consuming. I mean, the fascination with what was going on. And I realized that I was paying some huge prices with my life mm -hmm. and the health of my life and the quality and the longevity of my life. So that really, that really showed up different. But I think the biggest thing, Steve, is, is that when people start to understand the protocol mm -hmm. of what it really takes in order to you know, ward off the syndrome and the effects of it, mm -hmm. and they get to have that experience, yeah. then they become believers, and that just shifts everything. And then they, yeah, right. Because I never, I never knew I could feel this good, as mm -hmm. good as I feel today. Mm -hmm. And I did my 40th awesome. high school reunion yeah, last too. night, and yeah. they, they were a little shocked <laughs> that, that, that I'm looking pretty good. You know? yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and I didn't realize how much it yeah. had really uh, settled in for me and, and the quality of my life and, and the health of my life now. So. Yeah, you look like you're in your late 30s. And, yeah. Yeah, so. and I feel like it and yeah. ski like it. So. Okay. <laughs> okay great. Well, I think one thing that I, wanna, I really want to give Kirk credit for is that um, when we got back together for the second time, maybe you want to tell the, the story about how we met the first time. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Pretty interesting. <laughs> yeah, so, about the phone call? Yeah, the famous phone call yeah, that we well, met. <laughs> Well, when a lot of the, um, pe these are parts. And this is what, eight years ago? Just to put eight, it a time frame. Eight years yeah. ago. At least eight, eight, years, yeah. at least eight uh, maybe nine years ago. Yeah, mm -hmm. eight or nine years ago. And some of the foundational elements that, that Peter talks about in the protocol had been uh, being developed by John Anderson. And so I had um, started writing a system using Michael's, Michael Gerber's work mm -hmm. and on how to show people what those foundational pieces were and especially how to understand it so that you could utilize it that way and really get the results that you wanted. Mm -hmm. And that was called Go Cleanse. So I actually, um, in my business, use a process called personal constraint theory that a good coach of mine, Lance Walnow, taught me. And in that, you basically, it's a business theory that basically says you have two primary constraints to overcome. One is the systemic part, so it's understanding how to use those nutraceuticals, how to use the protocol in order to get the result. Mm -hmm. But also a big part of it was uh, in the business line of that and how it works was to understand the human element, mm -hmm. the belief systems of people and, yeah. and how they associate with it. That's like half of it. Yeah. yeah. So I wrote the system mm -hmm. to incorporate both of those. Mm -hmm. And I actually, Peter, one of his partners was a um, well-known coach and had developed a really neat 90-day uh, system for working with people. Mm -hmm. And that's what I was looking for was something like that. And I'd been through that system. Mm -hmm. So okay, great. Yeah, it was really cool. And well, then once I called them, then I showed them how that system worked over the phone, and I got through about the first ten minutes. And Peter said, "Stop, stop, right there. We'll be on a plane in the morning." <laughs> so I flew, <laughs> flew out to Vegas, and we sat down at the uh, Rio Hotel by the pool, and uh, oh, for about twelve a hours. Table just about this size. Yeah, and I walked them through the whole process, and yeah. and that's really how we started working together. Yeah, and what was so um, amazing to me was that I saw a way, because you know my, my passion is to change the world, okay? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and it's one thing for me to go out and lecture, which I do, or, or do this television show, which is extremely important in, uh, in terms of awareness. However, for people that really want to understand what it means to live healthier longer, there's only one reason that people should watch this show, and that's really if they are interested in living healthier longer. And as I did my research, I began to realize that there were more and more factors that were involved, okay? For example, to those, for those that maybe are just tuning into the show for the first time, T stands for toxicity, D stands for deficiency, O stands for overweight, and S stands for stress, okay? Well, and just really the last few days, I've been working on actually uh, writing a stress chapter and it was so enlightening because I realized that we must employ multiple like Pilates and yoga and meditation and things like that mm -hmm. in order to give ourselves the best chance to really diminish the effects of stress, which is now Stanford Medical School, number one killer is stress, mm -hmm. number one killer. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that we are going to do, and I know we've talked about it on the show, and Kirk and I even were talking about it today, about creating a workbook for people where, okay, here are the nutraceuticals that you're going to want to use. Here's how you use them. However, that's not enough. In terms of stress, there are, there are you know, any number of things that are on, uh, available to people, but unless you also incorporate things like learning how to meditate, even five minutes a day, mm -hmm. going for a walk, deep breathing, all of those kind of things become so important. Mm -hmm. Well, I will say this, at times I love him because he's one of my dear friends, mm -hmm. at times I hate him because he mm -hmm. literally would force me to sit down and say, I don't understand that. For me, because you know, I've, I've, this is, I'm, a, I'm a nerdy researcher as we know, mm -hmm. 
and I read it. We were doing it today. And he says, I, this doesn't make any sense to me at all. I said, what do you mean it doesn't make any sense? It's like clear as can be to me. <laughs> he says, no, you have to rewrite this. Yeah. So what's been amazing is that the collaboration, I, it's sort of like Lennon and McCartney in a way, mm. that it's sort of like, I guess, in a way, okay, I'm writing the words and then he's writing the music and then we're coming together and say, well, does this make sense? So that when he goes and teaches other people about Honestly, these are things that in your life, if you will do them, it gives you a greater chance to live healthier longer. Mm -hmm. And But a big part of that, which we've done really in some of the first shows, is to make people aware of how intense and how threatening this problem that we're facing really is called Tito's Syndrome. Mm -hmm. Because you'll never understand a solution unless you understand the problem and its magnitude. Mm -hmm. What's amazing is just this week I had this huge epiphany as I was working on protocol I thought, my gosh, protocol helps me define the problem even more. Mm -hmm. As I would look at the solution, I recognized that the solution was driving me more to say, oh my gosh, the problem's worse than I thought. Mm -hmm. So he's been instrumental in helping me when we got together two years ago, and he came to one of my lectures, and he hadn't seen one in quite a while, and he said, we, we need to sit down and go through this. Mm -hmm. Because it was all in my head. It wasn't down. So unless, it, unless it's written down and put in a format that people can use it, like, okay, folks, if you're going go to go to, to uh, the grocery store, this is what you want to look for. Mm -hmm. Unless we have it in that form, then people aren't going to be able to utilize it. Mm -hmm. That's where his great skill and all this training that he's done over the years ha has been, a, for me, an incredible collaboration. Mm -hmm. Like I said, sometimes I hate him, sometimes I love him. Great. So, so, so my challenge is... Um, and, and I, I need some feedback from the both of you about this. So my challenge is, is that um, the general public is bombarded with tremendous amount of information yes. uh, all day long in the media and in newspapers and everywhere we go, mm -hmm. okay, in the, on the radio. There's nowhere you can go where this stuff is not being pushed to people, this information that's misinformation. I call it confusion, manipulation, fear, and force mm -hmm. is, is really <laughs> what's being applied out there. Mm -hmm. Now... Now that's in, you, you know, we know that that's the case, right? I'm sure you agree that that's the case. It is. Um, now, how do we how do we bring something completely new, like what we're talking about, which is an, a new health conversation, and also the two dose uh, syndrome? How do we bring something new to the public that's already have been pushed all this information? Like all this data is in our minds, right? And our egos are having a lot of fun with it. <laughs> so what, what I want to bring into the conversation is, is the, being awake, the being awake and being conscious conversation because I don't believe personally, and I could be wrong, but personally I don't believe that it is possible to live a healthy, longer life without being conscious and being awake and, and doing what you're doing. Right. Well, let me answer that with two questions that I normally ask people. And I had a very, <laughs> I would say... Um, uh, thrilling conversation with a medical doctor this week. Really, we went back and forth for uh, more than a day. And I said to him, okay, I said, obviously you know lots of stuff. You went to medical school and he's doing really interesting um, work on carbohydrates and their effect on the brain, which I know something about. So we were just going back and forth and I said, look, doctor, the only way that this is going to work is if you're willing to answer these two questions for me. And I think this will address the general public and then, Kirk, you can, sure. you can uh, come in on this. Number one, what if you didn't know what you think you know, general public, doctor, health professional, whatever? And the second question is, what if everything you thought you knew was wrong? Mm -hmm. That's the problem that we're facing with mm -hmm. the general public, mm -hmm. that people think they know. And the thing is that we're looking at a different problem. We're looking at a completely different problem, and we're applying the old health conversation, which was diet and exercise, or, and there's a great documentary, and I think I've maybe mentioned it before in one of the previous shows, called Escape Fire, HBO, where they had the head of Medicaid and Medicare, who basically are saying the current system as we know it is going to collapse. Now, the reason for that is that the old conversation was based on what's called procedural interventions. What does that mean? Well, we're the best in the world. You need a heart stint, you need a pacemaker, you need a quadruple bypass, we're the best in the world. What we're lacking is preventative intervention. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of people are in the ER with a heart attack and they say, you know what, I'm going on a diet tomorrow. Mm -hmm. A little too late. 
Yeah. You want to? You want to? Well, I think it's a, a lot that. of that, and, and a lot of your research I think is so cool in it because I thought I knew because a lot of the a lot of the information out there is misinformation, mm. like eating healthy. If you can go out eat eat healthy and exercise, thing is, is we were doing the studies. But you really can't. Well, There's we, no way to eat healthy. Right. You know, we, that's the whole point. The research is just mm. off the charts. Mm. I mean, the reports came out that our soils in North America were deficient 80 years ago. And we've been pouring more and more herbicides and pesticides so that there's less and less absorbability with the minerals and the trace minerals and the micronutrients. And if you don't have those in your system, you're not absorbing anything. Mm. So you can go out to all these f great markets and fresh and, markets and, and everything. And have a great salad. You think you're having a great you're, salad. You think you're having a great yeah. salad. You mm. think you're eating well. And yet mm. people don't, don't understand is, is they're not. I never, I've never seen the information put together in this way so that people can understand. But the biggest thing that motivates people is the results. Because we watch with the cofactors and the compounding of the cofactors, that connectivity, the only way to really create those kind of results in, in the areas of your life that are affected is to understand a multifaceted uh, approach. Okay, and that's what Peter's talking about. Is it's not just you. You got to know what the nutrients are and what your body really needs. Mm. Okay, and then you have to understand where to get them, mm. then the quality of them. Mm. Okay, and then and then how to put that into a lifestyle that life's still fun. Right, mm. we got to have mm. fun. Right, Steve? That's right. <laughs> we're not doing it anymore. Right. <laughs> that's right. And and that's the thing is is putting it in. So I think the biggest thing that really motivates people is is when they look at the results because a lot of people are trying to take care of one thing. Maybe they're trying to cleanse, take care of toxicity. But the other three cofactors are still running rampant on them, mm. and they're still not getting the results that they want. So if, I think that's one of the biggest things, that when people see the results that they're in their own lives, it opens them up to go, wow, this is a whole different approach. I've never heard an approach like this. And then mm. it's just common sense inside of us that goes, you know, that makes sense. This really mm. makes sense. I've never heard this like this. Well, okay. today, for example, well, we we're working specifically on trace minerals, okay? Mm -hmm. Trace minerals are one of the most misunderstood things that there are. People don't even know that we need them. They don't know what they do. They don't know how they work. And I was walking them through and some- do they even care? Well, they don't even know to care because they don't know what's important, <laughs> that, and right? That's the point is if they knew what it was doing in their uh, bodies and why they're getting these results, why, right. they're, why they're getting the things that are really slowing them down, causing them to age faster, go into mm -hmm. decay, mm -hmm. and all the things that start to break down, that's when it catches their attention. They go, wow. And when somebody gets serious about their health because they have the situation, it's almost too late a lot of times. Right. Mm. So the thing is, 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 and I love this with, with working with Peter, is to really watching is, is I see this more of now an offensive game of life. You know, I'm going out and I'm taking it on. I'm not going to wait till I get sick to try to do something different. Mm. But the cool thing is, is that in, when, as soon as you start to really experience the protocol, life shifts so quick, you rest so much better, mm. you think so much clearer. Everything, the, the emotional, the mental, the physical, mm. even the spiritual the side of life mm. really starts to, to All shift. of it opens up. It right. really does. Not yeah. from a religious standpoint of view, but just an yeah. awareness standpoint yes. of view. And well, you, you're you experiencing this. I mean, your life is changed because of the things that I explained to you and what you were doing, which you thought was working, really wasn't, even though you thought it was. I mean, mm -hmm. it's, sort of, mm -hmm. it's sort of crazy that we've gone down this path. And we were talking today, and, and I know you and I've had this discussion before, I can't believe that nobody's talking about this. I can't believe the evidence is so overwhelming that what we're doing in thinking that we can eat healthy, and one of my famous quotes is, food will never be enough again. Not because I say so, it's because these experts are saying, we destroyed the, seal, the soil in 1936. Yeah. You think it's any better today? Yeah. We've taught more and more herbicides and pesticides. And what we well, discovered today, and you, you touched on this a little bit a while back, do you know that when they're using fertilizer, that it actually creates organisms that require pesticides? What an insidious relationship that is. Yeah. So we but, sell them the fertilizer, it's a, it's creating a, the pathogen that now we need Now we need a, a herbicide to kill because we've used the fertilizer to... I mean, hello? It's a, it's a brilliant business plan. It's a great that's business how they make plan. Money. That's how they make money. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and that's, that's exactly what I was thinking as you started this dialogue, which is the reason why nobody's talking about this is because the people that are talking right now are the people with the deep pockets yes. that have created the situation that all of us are in right now. Yeah, that's why. That's, for sure. that's why. That's why. They they're the one with the voice. Well, they're the one with the money. Or GMOs. 
Hello? <laughs> Genetically modified organisms. Those are really great things when you understand what they are and what they do to make them. I mean, it's just, it's just, it's just to me, it's like, wait a minute. If you really think, if you're interested in living healthier longer and having this zest for life and having energy and sleeping better at night and lowering your stress levels, you better get a new, you better get a whole new strategy, which I do call the new health conversation, which Kirk is right. It's based on offense. It's like, if I'm sick, I'm going to go to the doctor. We get the best doctors in the world. Right now, we're spending 80% of all our dollars on 20% of the people that have the same diseases, that they just keep treating another heart stint. In this documentary, there's one woman, poor woman, she has five or six heart stints. Mm -hmm. So they keep putting more heart stints in her. Mm -hmm. But no one checked her cholesterol, no one checked the fact she was overweight, et cetera. And even this cardiologist saying, this is insane. She says, for me to put a heart stint in, I get reimbursed by the insurance companies, $1,500. Takes me 45 minutes. To sit down with this patient and go over nutrition and lifestyle and stress, the insurance company for that same same 45 minutes reimburses me $15. How am I going to pay my loans back and whatever? Mm -hmm. The system itself is set up to fail. Mm -hmm. It is based, it's so crazy. One of my doctor friends was telling me, let's, let's say you're an elderly patient, you have diabetes and you have high blood pressure and you have arthritis and these various conditions, right? They can only get paid by treating one of those conditions per visit. So if you come in, they'll treat you for diabetes, but they won't, they won't do anything for high blood pressure. You have to come make another appointment. Mm -hmm. They're getting paid per procedure. If you were to, my understanding from my doctor friends, if you were to treat them for multiple uh, conditions, mm -hmm. you'd only get paid for one. The whole mm -hmm. system mm -hmm. is ludicrous. You talk about a business model, it's completely flawed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did you see la this week the CBO? Originally, the, the national health care was going to cost $900 billion. This year, they just rescored it. 2.7 trillion. And I don't even think it started yet because you're talking two thirds of America's overweight as we sit here today. By 2020, in six, six years and four months, it's going to be 80%. That, I mean, you won't be able to deal with this. Nope. Yeah, no, no, I got that. So, so here's the thing. So, uh, so <laughs> the weight management industry is mm -hmm. a $450 billion industry. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, um, you know, what do we keep seeing on television? We keep seeing ads. Mm -hmm. Go to this fad, go to that fad. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not only $10 a month or it's free for the first 30 days or 60 days. <laughs> and people keep doing these things okay. and 60% of Americans are overweight and obese. And what's wrong with that picture? Well, yeah, this is flying here. I was thought I had a conversation with a uh, very wise doctor, matter of fact, and, and he was, um, talking about his home and so his wife wanted to lose the weight so now they have everything's frozen in the freezer and they microwave it that's dead radiated food <laughs> okay <laughs> and and yet yeah. uh, he's l looking at a very very serious health situation in the next two weeks and i'm going do you think there's a link between the frozen dead radiated food mm. you know and, and he, when we started talking about to dose he was just like Oh my gosh, this makes so much sense. I've never, nobody's ever explained it to me this way. Mm -hmm. So, he, you know, he, matter of fact, we're going to send him, send him information for the links because he, he wants to get, you know, why diets are yeah. failing us, understand that part. And he wants to understand how to really change his life now so that it can take on what's really happening. Again, we're back to people don't understand the com connectivity of all those, four, all four of those cofactors coming together. Mm -hmm. And then it just expands the, you know, the devastating effects that they yeah, have. Yeah, no, I, I really get it. I mean, I mean, I, and I said this to you before on, on shows before, is that I've been around you now for, what, three, four months, mm -hmm. right? And um, when I go out there and talk about this, because I talk about this, I own an internet TV network, I talk <laughs> about it on that, I talk about it everywhere I go. And sometimes I wish that he was in my pocket, because mm -hmm. I, can't, I can't communicate it as effectively as he can communicate it. Yeah, and I, and I could kind of get lost in how this is related, and I don't have the statistics that I can just, you know, speed out as quickly as he can do it. And so I'm not effective. I'm feeling I'm not effective communicating it. That's where he comes in. Yeah. That's yeah, exactly. That's, that's why he's on this show today, mm -hmm. to let people know mm -hmm. that we are going to bring hope to people to say, look, it's one thing to be aware of it. It's another thing to really begin to integrate it into your life, to really make 
what do you call about imprinting your DNA or something, I imparting the knowledge yeah. so that people, because look. To internalize just, it. Yeah. Look, this has to be a grassroots movement, okay? The, one of the things I love about this station is that mm. we're able to really bring a brand new approach to people. I mean, we know this is going all over the world. The, um, the people for the first time are realizing, wait a minute, we've got to yeah. stop doing what we're doing. We don't know what to do, though. See, that's the, that's the problem. They, they're people recognizing don't that they do. don't yeah. know what to do. And where Kirk, and with my help, is going to take this message and just make it so that people can sit down, either read my books, see this television show, et cetera. Because imparting that knowledge, we've got to work together. We, I'm one guy. I can't do it alone. I think it was Helen Keller that said, alone we can do so little, mm. and together we can do so much. Yeah. And that's the way I feel. The reason that I wanted Kirk on the show today was that he's going to be such an integral part moving forward of imparting this knowledge to people so they can go out in their own lives and use it. And communities. Mm. Yeah, yes. it's not just and a, communicate. Right, and yes. communicate and create and, and their friends and their family. Because it's not just a matter of us giving them a grocery list, which we'll do. We'll say, okay, here are all the ingredients. Boom. But it depends on how you ingest this at what times. Things like drinking enough water. I mean, it just, there's so many things that people don't know. And because the problem is so unbelievably frightening and it's coming at us like a tsunami. We can't just sit back. We can't hope that somehow things are going to change. Yeah, they're changing for the worse. Mm -hmm. Day in, day out. Yes. So have you guys tried to answer the question um, when, when people are like watching the show or reading your book or doing whatever you're going to be doing in the near yes. future? Mm -hmm. Answer the question, what's in it for me? For them? Mm -hmm. Well, I think one is, is that people are so excited to be actually enlightened to what's really going on because most of them think they know. But yet when they start looking at the, this information and especially the patterns in the information and how it really shows up, they get so much more excited. So they're getting educated so that they can be really the expert in their own lives. I think, I think people are done abdicating their health over to systems that obviously don't work. Mm -hmm. So I think the big part is, is that they actually get to know, understand, and be able to utilize it for themselves, for their families, for their friends, and for their communities in such a way. And I think that's a very uh, basic human trait also. They're really looking for that fulfillment. Mm -hmm. And think about it. What is your life really worth, whether it's your relationship or your job or how much money you make or wh whatever, the ventures you want to go on, if you don't have your health? Mm -hmm. It all, it all falls it's, to the wayside really worthless. quick. Yeah, yeah. So having that in their lives so that they can, uh, again, be in control of it, understand it, and use it the way that, really the way, I like what John you know, Anderson said. He says, you know, it's unfortunate. It's so unfortunate that we need something like this in our lives today. But look how, at the evolution of the world and what, how we really need it now. And that's the thing is understanding that. But then like his last, his last sentence, he says, but thank God we have it. Well, it's an, it's, I said this many times, it's like an antidote. The exactly. only antidote that yes. I know that actually works. Yes. And um, what, what's also interesting for me is that I think, I think in addition to people being motivated by, you know, whatever, uh, I know that I'm motivated by... I don't just want to live for 80 years, 100 years, 120 years. Mm -hmm. I want the possibility that I can live for as long as I want mm -hmm. and that the quality of my life will not depend on how old my body is or what illnesses I'm going to be getting because yeah. I basically don't want to have any illnesses. I think it's yeah. possible to get 80, 100, 120 without you know, taking 20 pills a day. Yeah. Well, and, and, to, and to stay in a quality of life where you, where you can stay productive and adventurous and, you know, just experience the beauty of life. And that's the mm -hmm. thing is the quality is so important. Who wants to live sick? You know, I, matter of fact, we talked about that, you know, and he's, he was talking about his old, oldest daughter. Now he goes, she's the only one I can But talk. there are no other options right now. No. That's what's interesting. Yeah. Is the only other options you have. I mean, you know, when I was dealing with my diabetes thing, I was I was in the clinic and I looked around and well, you I need said, to "Tell Kirk that story. He's not aware of your story when when you and I first met. Yeah, about your daughter. Yeah. So my, my daughter was pregnant for the second time and she was like I think seven or eight months and uh, she was at my house and bo with both of her pregnancies she had to test her diabetes. Mm -hmm. uh, her doctor 
the set that you have to test it because you have you could have a, a problem, right. and um, we don't want the baby to have a you know have a problem. Mm -hmm. So so she's testing testing hers, and she just out of the blue just says, "Hey, Dad, this I think we should test your." You know your your sugar level just mm -hmm. for for the health. Was this of it. four months ago or five months ago? Yeah, something four, like four that. Months, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's probably like five five okay. months. And so she tests me, and it comes in four hundred, huh? my sugar. And she says, "Well, something must be wrong with the meter, <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> because at four hundred, that's good. that's like Very you're bad. gonna go to emergency because that's um, right high. now. That's really mm -hmm. high. You're gonna have a diabetic. Yeah. You're gonna be in a diabetic coma." Yeah, at 500, you yeah. could die. Right. Mm -hmm. So she does it again on a different finger, same thing, 400. Mm -hmm. So she says, Dad, go to the emergency clinic. So I said, okay. So the deal is, is that I never had any major illnesses ever mm -hmm. in my life, okay? This is the first that I had ever had to deal with. And, um, it, you know, it was really, it, it really woke me up. It's like, oh, my God, what the hell? And this is, this is after two years of, of I hired a nutritionist. I started to exercise. I, I used to be 243 pounds. Hmm. Okay. At my, on at, your own, you'd lost how much? At my height, that's not pretty. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and uh, I, on my own, I, I got down to 194. Huh. And I couldn't, it, it didn't matter, because I, I got rid of everything. I mean, I got rid of pop, I got rid of... Um, all the fast food. I can't even go to a fast food place anymore. Mm -hmm. I, it, you know, I'm going to throw up if I yes. have to go in there. Especially after you yeah. meet me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> um, so, you know, imagine, I, I know that even if I get salad and tomatoes and all those good things, mm -hmm. I, or, I already know because of what you taught me that even that doesn't have the nutrition and, and the stuff in it that I need. So can you imagine what's in a fast food meal? Yeah. Oh, my God. We have different names for this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And and so um, so after two years of that, I got down to 194, and it didn't matter. I had nothing else to cut out of my diet because mm -hmm. I was only eating chicken, fish, and um, I didn't eat any bread. I didn't eat pasta. So there was nothing else to cut out. I was there, and I exercised like I was biking two hours a day. Mm -hmm. I said, I can't do any more than this. Yeah. What the hell? It's a lot. And... That's it. Nothing would ever change. And the only thing that ever changed it is when, when Peter showed up. Yes. And, and I lost another 10 pounds. Mm -hmm. you know? And um, by the way, I did another test. I stopped your program for three weeks. Yeah. Guess what happened? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Tell me. <laughs> <laughs> I gained 10 pounds. Mm -hmm. There you go. So now I have proven it both ways. Yeah. Right. Well, and, and you, you're... Never, ever, ever will I do that again. Right. Because mm -hmm. the thing is that if you believe in the philosophy of the problem, that the toxins are coming in our body, this is scientifically proven now, and because your body doesn't know what else to do with them, it's storing them in fat cells, that's why you gain the weight back. Mm -hmm. And the point is that you stopped employing the protocol of massive amounts of nutrients and all of those kind of things. Guess what happened? I mean, th this is the problem. Okay, people think they're going to go on a diet today. I always tell them, I say, do you really think a year from now you're going to weigh less? When does that ever happen? They might, they might lose weight for a couple months, and then they gain it back. But, but all the other symptoms came back, Peter. Really? Yeah, mm -hmm. I, needed, I needed naps in the afternoon. Wow. Mm -hmm. uh, I used to have, I had a tennis injury that I've been dealing with for the last 15 years mm -hmm. the, on the left-hand side of my, yeah. on my leg here. Um, and, um, you know, as soon as I stopped... Um, it came back. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, and we're not making any medical claims. I don't know. I, all I can no, say... No, I'm not making any I, medical I know, claims. All I'm saying yeah. is that, that uh, it, what it, I'm was, saying it is was painful, that, and, it, and it, since I'm back, here's a good gone. Here's a good way to think about it. I was taught mm -hmm. this, that if we went back 200 million years ago, 100 million years ago, when the Earth had these lush rainforests, and we had brontosauruses that weighed, I don't know, 30 tons or whatever they weighed, those animals, for the most part, just ate grass and leaves and stuff like that. The difference, though, that that soil was infused with these massive amounts of minerals and micronutrients from literally the center, the core of the earth, with all this volcanic eruption, 
it went out on the soil. That's why those plants grew like that. See, and people today, when they try and, there's one, the, the paleothonic diet, right? Now that's great in theory, if you could go back 200 years ago and actually eat the food that had the nutrients in it. What they keep doing is they keep reinventing the same thing and saying diet and exercise is one huge flaw with that. In a big new study they just did, there's a big difference between the RDA, which is what you went back to, recommended daily allowance, versus the recommended daily intake of nutrients and micronutrients, the things that used to be in the soil that are gone, that were gone in 1936. The point is that nature provided us with these plants with basically the periodic table. You know the periodic table? Do you know that we need gold and silver and arsenic and copper and zinc and all these, but in tiny, tiny, minute micro, that's why they're called micronutrients. Mm. And they went out and attempted to meet the daily required, or the recommended daily intake of these nutrients. Mm -hmm. You know what they found? They were anywheres at the low side 3,500 calories a day up to 5,500 calories a day. That was trying to eat normal. They analyzed the four most popular diets. The least amount of calories you'd need to meet that micronutrient uh, minimum mm. was 17,000 calories a day. Oh my God. Up to 27,500 calories a day. I would be 500 pounds in six months. So I mean, do you understand mm. why when you went back to doing what you were doing and mm. got off of the protocol, mm. Look what happened. Are you surprised? I'm not. No, I'm not surprised. Now, the point is that when I started down this path, because, you know, my story, I was in very, very bad shape 10 years ago from a, you know, from a heart attack risk, and I was overweight and all these kind of things. And what did my doctor, my great doctor, tell me to do? He really is a great doctor. He said, diet, exercise, and a drug, which I took. And after two months, when I'd lost about eight pounds of the 40 I needed to lose, and my cholesterol had not come down that much, it's like, now what? I asked him, he said, I can't give you any more of the drug I was giving him, giving me to lower my cholesterol. Now what do I do? Mm -hmm. Now what do I do? Like you, what was your, so prior to this, you did everything you could do. You were concerned. You didn't even know you were a diabetic though. Even doing no, all I that didn't. stuff, you became a diabetic, I right? A diabetic. Right, yeah. you got the yeah. sugar and that warned you, thank uh -huh. goodness you got that warning shot. And had you not met me, what would you have done? What would you have done? Nothing different. The same, the same thing? Nothing different than I already And what would have changed? What would have changed? Was anything changing? No. Right? No. See, what's interesting about the three of us sitting here, we all have had life-changing, life-threatening events, and thank goodness we were made aware that what we were taught, what we thought we knew, wasn't going to solve our problem. Your story is pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. You might not be here either today if you hadn't done this. And yeah. he was a pro skier, like me. I, was, I wasn't a pro skier, but I was a ski racer, tried it for the Olympics. So we were both super athletes, thinking we knew. He was exercising, doing everything. Now, where were you when I met you eight or nine years ago? You know, not in a good place. Right. My, my doctor basically looked me in the face at 47 and said, you could die any moment from the condition you're in that you have wow. yourself. Seriously. Right now. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And, Loomed up to almost 300, and you know nothing was right in my system. And that's when I started learning about the protocol. And I walked out of that doctor's office seeking divine guidance. <laughs> and wow. really, he really did. Wow, yes. that's amazing. Now I yeah. didn't know him then, and <clears throat> subsequent to that time, I would say that I've made some adjustments in what he was doing, especially yeah. in the last two years or in the last few months. Because yeah. as he's begun to really understand it at the level because it's important, he must understand it in a way that he can impart it to other people, okay? Because mm. it's one thing to hear me talk, it's another thing then to really understand it. Like you said, these are life choices. We want people to be, have an option. It's not like we're trying to sell them anything. It's like, look, if you think you're gonna go and eat broccoli and spinach and you know carrots and peas and whatever, that's gonna be your answer. No, no, no. You need to seek Even out- Even if you become a complete vegetarian. Still not, still not good not enough. enough. Still, yeah. and it's not happening. Right. And so what we have done is we've said, wait a minute, the conventional opportunities for us, which were procedural interventions, what did I do in my case when it, when it worked up to a point and then it stopped? Mm -hmm. I mean, my cholesterol came down some, but based on the dosage of what I was taking, he was worried because one of the side effects we know of statin drugs is something called muscle wasting, where literally 
the muscle, you know, last time I checked my heart's a muscle, probably not a good thing if that's a, if that's a side, if it doesn't happen to everybody. But I was getting cramping in my legs and there were some real, he said, I can't, I'm not giving you any, any higher dose. Mm -hmm. In your case, you were pretty scared, right? Yeah, well. You had a, you had a, a daughter then, right? Yeah, Young. She, she had just been born. Oh, wow. And uh, he, he said, yeah, probably not a good time to check out right now. So, <laughs> wow. yeah, and so it's been it's just a total, yeah. a total shift. And this is what drives us, okay? I mean, we're spending, literally, we've spent thousands of hours developing what we're going to be able to get. I mean, mm -hmm. to give people just a simple workbook and say, okay, open it up. In addition to doing everything right, for example, how many people are drinking half their body weight in ounces of water a day? Not too many. Yeah. And what kind of water are you drinking? I hope it's not coming from a tap. Because right. what's coming out of the tap is not that great. Do people even know that? Do they, do they more importantly to your point about, do they care? Well, they don't care because they don't even know. Yes. Now, once they know, if they ignore it, then I've done my job. Yeah. I'm not trying to convince anybody of anything. I'm simply saying, this is what we know based on the research. Yes. And when I read this stuff, it makes my hair go on fire. That like, why is no one talking about it mm -hmm. really why yeah no no i get it but here's the other thing too that i want to make sure we cover is that the the only indication of this is not the fact that people are 300 pounds or 350 pounds that's that's not enough because when i go to clinics okay i see all kinds of skinny people and they they yeah, have they're... major major illnesses right. yes so it isn't it isn't no. just about no. that that we're overweight yes it isn't just about that because you can be skinny and you can still have all kinds of issues. Let me interrupt you for a moment. Yeah, There's a big study that was released that, I, that I'm talking about. I, I introduced him to it just a few weeks ago called Just Because You're Thin Doesn't Mean You're Healthy, mm -hmm. done by cardiologists. And guess what they proved? They proved that in doing MRIs on fit athletes that they had this around all of their internal organs, the brain, the kidney, the liver, the pancreas, this white halo of this toxic fat called the body's toxic burden. Mm -hmm. And they literally said there are people Mm -hmm. that are athletes, that when we do a fat analysis, they're excessively overweight from a fat percentage standpoint of view, even though they look thin on the outside. Mm -hmm. So it, it supports your point. Mm -hmm. Now, again, this is research. And as you know, I don't give people my opinions. This is what the research says. This is what I found. Now, if you didn't know about it, I'm going to at least make you aware and then continue to do what you're doing or do something completely different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I got that. And I just also wanted to give you that feedback. We, we were talking about uh, the show. Yes. And and the feedback I wanted to give you is I have been doing uh, media for as long as you have been doing this research. So it's about 10 years. It's kind of funny mm -hmm. how that works. Mm -hmm. But um, what's interesting is that I have never had any any talent, any host, uh, or any anybody that, that does what you do. Um, well, nobody does what you do, but what, you know what I mean. Yeah, mm -hmm. thanks. Um, Anybody that, that I'm helping in media yes, to start yes, a show, yes. uh, no show has ever showed up in statistics like the one this one does. People are actually watching this show from the beginning to the end. Mm -hmm. That's unheard of. Well, what are the, what's if normal you, in, in this? What's normal is people watch five, ten minutes and they're gone. Wow. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. So they must have what, you, what he coined a yeah. fascinating curiosity. Yeah. Yeah. So the information that we're providing is of interest to people because they want to know more about now that I, gosh, I guess there is hope. I guess there is something different. Because I think the discouraging thing is people go on diets, for example, which the protocol has nothing to do with dieting, um, and they lose a pound a week. And that's great. That's, that's all the doctors. And I agree. If you want to diet, that would be great. But honestly, if you're 100 pounds overweight, are you really going to eat like a rabbit? for two years losing, you know, to lose 100 pounds? No. So people lose hope. Mm -hmm. And then their belief kicks in. And motivation. That, yeah, and they, mm -hmm. they become guilty and they start blaming themselves and say, why not me? So then they just give up. They give up. Mm -hmm. Diets are so hard because the very principle of a diet, when you think about it, lowering yeah. calories, we now know that our food is so nutritionally bankrupt. Can you imagine if we need 5,500 calories a day and you're going on a 1,400 calorie a day diet? Do you wonder why you're hungry? Do you wonder why you want to eat your couch at 5 o'clock at night? Right? <laughs> Am I right? Yeah. Well, actually. Beliefs, eat, Kirk, right? Yeah, Belief actually, system. Actually, Absolutely. actually eat, the, eat the potato chips that you left there yesterday. Right. In the, in the cracks. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, because, no, and the thing is you are hungry. But from a cellular level, your body yes. is screaming at you going, please 
feed me, mm -hmm. not another piece of pizza, not fast food, but nutrients, mm -hmm. and especially these micronutrients that have been known for years that we needed these things, but it's been swept under the table. Yeah. So what we've done, you were telling me today, you went in the supermarket, tell me what you were telling me about this beautiful food. Yeah, well, a couple of revelations. You know, I've gone through a regular supermarket. I went, wow, it's amazing the the array of the foods. Effect, yeah. yeah, and I went, all this beautifully packaged <laughs> and marketed destructive food. <laughs> it's just unbelievable in there, even even in the healthy. Oh yeah, I stores. mean, what did they put on? What did they put on the apples to make it so look, look so good? Oh yeah, I mean, what did they put on there? Some kind of a yeah, they got all like kinds of wax. Yeah, some kind of wax. They got they put all kinds of to make it look good. Yeah. yeah. The thing it's is, is even even in the good. healthy ones, I walked in and, and there's one aisle that says non-GMO, and I said, great. What's everything else in here? Right. Right. <laughs> right. And yeah. that was probably ninety percent of the rest of the market mm. was was. Uh -huh. Not, and, not and, GMO. And that's, again, why to be redundant, why awareness is so doggone important. And one of the things that attracted me to your whole, you know, consciousness thing, the one thing we should be most conscious about is our health, right? Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. you got nothing. You can be conscious, and if you're 300 pounds and you can't even walk, I mean, what good is that? What's the quality of life? What's it going to look like? And we know now, people say, oh, well, we're living longer. And one problem, we're living sicker. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're living longer and we're living sicker. Mm -hmm. We've got great drugs. We've got these, but the system can't support it. Yes. You're not going to be able to support another 25% of the people that are already overweight. Now they're going to have 80%. And by 2030, they're saying it could be 100% of America being overweight. There's nothing good about that. Yeah. Oh, my God. It can't possibly work. Yeah. And so awareness becomes the cornerstone of everything that... Kirk and I are doing. And I think that you have had as as close to the situation as you thought you were. Because we lost, we did, we lost track for about five or six years. We were still friends, we didn't, we didn't fight, we just weren't, he was kind of went his way, and I kept sort of like the tortoise, eh, reading all the nerdy books, and you know, people would accuse me of, you don't need to know all that stuff. Well, I wanted to know it for me. I wanted to know everything that I could do to live healthier longer. Because 10 years ago, when, you're, when my doctor says to me, and by the way, you'll never see your kids get married and you'll never meet your grandchildren. If you don't do something drastically different starting today, you think I was motivated to go on a diet and to exercise and to take the drugs? Of course I was. But then, when it didn't work, now what do I do? There were no more drugs that hear me. Mm -hmm. mm. Wow. Yeah. And you were completely unaware. You just accepted the fact you're taking naps in the afternoon. Now, that well, was I good thought, when you were in kindergarten with your blankie, but... Well, I thought it had to do with the fact that I'm 60, and that's what people 60 years old do. <laughs> and I'm going like, heck no. no and not, now... <laughs> not in our and, world. And now, and now, you know, I'm up at 5 o'clock in the morning, and yes. I tackle my hardest task first. Yes. yes. Which, is, which is, if I look back, what I used to do is I used to pro procrastinate my hardest task. Yes. Right, and, and this show and mm -hmm. my books and my website will be dedicated to give people choices and give people mm -hmm. say, look, this is what's... When you go to the supermarket... At least avoid this stuff. And even though you're going to go down the healthy food aisle, you still need trace minerals. You need micronutrients. You need rare earth elements. You need other things that are going to support your body in what's missing even from the best food you can touch. That's why food will never be enough again. Mm -hmm. And that's not just me saying it. Now there's a preponderance of evidence and colleagues, medical people, nutritionists, whatever, that absolutely support this same premise because... If we continue to do what we're doing, it's not just the definition of insanity. It's like we're killing ourselves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, like the, the lead into my it's song. It's a That's rapid state of the game, yeah. and especially with Tadosi. Yeah, well, Tadosi. with Tadosi. It's, Tadosi. it's happening faster yep. because it's the interconnectivity of those four, of toxicity, deficiency, overweight, and stress. And you're an athlete. Good. I've still got toxic, deficient, and I certainly have stress. Mm -hmm. And you must attack all of them. You can't just attack one. Can't say, oh, I'm going to work out and I'm, I'm not overweight. Congratulations. You're still toxic. Where are you getting your food? Where are you getting your food? If you're buying it from the supermarket and it's organic, congratulations. Still not enough. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And as a result of the nutritional deficiency, guess what happens in the human body? Stress goes up. 
Oh, what did you say on another show? I, I still haven't forgotten gotten this, is that the organic stuff gets organic uh, pesticides. Yes. <laughs> yes, they use organic <laughs> pesticides and herbicides on organic. Yeah. Oh, great. <laughs> well, I mean, if you think so, right? Yeah. But one of the things that's happening, see, with the plants, like the GMOs where they have what are called Roundup resistant. Roundup is one of the herbicides they use. Well, not only do the plants become resistant to the herbicide, they now become resistant to absorbing the nutrients that aren't even in the soil anymore, and the bugs have, have evolved, so now they need new herbicides and pesticides because the bugs now are resistant to the Roundup. Mm -hmm. So what a great system. Like you said, a beautiful business model. I don't even fault them. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying that we, we did an experiment. Originally, I think there were probably even noble causes, that GMOs were going to create bigger yields with less um, you know, pestilence and less, you know, well, it's turned out to be really no different. But the thing they didn't expect is that the neutral deficiency is a nutrient, I'm sorry, nutrient deficiency is so awful that you're seeing all of these, this cheap food, it was cheap today, except when you check in for your heart stent, mm -hmm. except when you get quadruple bypass, when we get kids diabetes out of control with our children. Yes. I mean, that's the real issue here. Mm. I don't think, I, I, I'm not, I don't believe in, you know, conspiracy theories and all that kind of stuff. I think they really tried something and unfortunately it didn't turn out anything like what they thought. Mm. Okay. Well, I, I would like you, you to also consider as you continue to work together yes. is that, um, you know, there's this, there's this saying that you can't teach old dogs new tricks, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> And Maybe. I, I don't believe that that's true, right? But um, but we know that that saying is out there, and that and that think about also our youth, um, because um, you know how, and I have three kids, so mm -hmm. I know just I a little two. bit. He has I just know a little bit about it. But so when my kids were in their teens or in their early twenties, um, I could talk about um, saving money, all I wanted to. Yes. They couldn't care less because mm -hmm. they weren't motivated because they're young. They, mm -hmm. they don't care about putting money aside. They want to live it up right now, do whatever they want to do right now. So this is, there, there's, there's, there's connections. There's like, if you connect the dots, there's connections here because our youth says, well, their bodies are fantastic. Mm -hmm. They look fantastic. They're in great shape, most of them, mm -hmm. although we have the problem with um, young adults that are also overweight. going through overweight. But um, like, like there is a kid that's living in our house right now temporarily, 16 years old. He's skinny, tall. He can eat, he can eat all day long. It won't show up on him. Mm -hmm. And I can talk to him about this stuff that we we're talking about here. He couldn't, right he couldn't, care, he couldn't right. care less right. mm -hmm. uh, because he said, I'm 16 years old and I can do whatever I want and I know everything there is to know. You can't tell me anything new. So how are you or are you going to somehow address this so that, so that somehow people can get that just because you have this mindset right now mm -hmm. and this attitude, they think they that, know. That, that's really not serving you? Yes. Well, it has to start with the parents. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's got to start from a, from a very young age when you realize, look, really don't be feeding your kids cereal, which are dead flakes in a cardboard coffin, mm -hmm. which we now know that the food companies admitted that they use 80% more sugar in kids' cereal, 40% less fiber, and 60% more salt to do one thing, to addict the kids to cereal so they'll eat more. It's called the bliss point. Mm -hmm. We, Kirk and I, feel an incredible, incredible responsibility, literally, to mankind to bring this message and at least say, look, this is what we know. Maybe you're not going to do it. It has to start with the parents. It has to start when kids are you know, first eating solid food. Mm. You really need to be looking at like baby food and what's in it. I mean, it starts right there. Mm. That's where you're going to stem it. When a kid's yeah. 16 years old, what's the old thing about we have 80% of our habits by the time we're five years old or something is close? Mm. Between eight and 12, Between depends on who you talk to. Yeah. Yeah. Eight and 12, yeah. you've got 80% of your beliefs in, in school. Well, kids learn everything by the time they're six. Yeah. Right. You know, one of the interesting things with the youth today, though, is, is that they're watching the the accelerated aging the decline and and their parents and their friends and things and so I think that's really having a big impact on them when their parents become sicker and sicker and 
you know, they're watching them go through something that's very devastating. Yeah. So I think that awareness is causing the kids today to really look at things different. And I find the kids are very excited, actually, to start to understand and learn, again, what's really going Once on. Once they understand the problem. Once we explain it to them. You know, like um, his daughter, how old? She's 10? 12. 12. I hate, I hate his, to cut you guys off, but guess what? The conscious hour is over. I again, can't believe it. It happened again. <laughs> well, so, hopefully we can have so, Kurt back for another show. Yeah, uh, definitely. Yeah. Especially once you get it more developed. Yes. Yeah. And we can maybe do an introduction of what, what the system really is. So I want to really thank um, uh, Kirk, our guest here. Thank you very much for flying in from Las Vegas. You're welcome. <laughs> and also, uh, I want to thank all of our viewers as well as uh, people behind uh, behind the uh, glass there, the crew. And um, uh, I want to thank you, Peter, because uh, without you, none of this would be happening, right? And <laughs> and now, as I understand it better, without Kirk, yes, mm -hmm. none of this would be happening either. And um, I guess you could say that without me. This show wouldn't that be right, happening? Exactly. <laughs> uh, there's there's happening? the interconnectivity and connectivity again. Yeah. It's, it's, it's another it's another system. It's, exactly. it's another system. So so if just to the viewers, if anything that we said or or did or done or anything that happened here today on the show that touched, moved, and inspired you, uh, please go to the website uh, thenewhealthconversation.tv and just leave us comments. Interact with us on the website. We'll love it. And uh, we, see you, uh, we will see you on the next episode, uh, which is coming up, episode seven. So thank you very much. Love you all. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Killing myself With the food I eat Toxic to my health Till I Got the news There's another path that I could choose And now I